The eternal Tao cannot be named. These are the first words of the Tao Te Ching, the fundamental text of Taoism. We see it stated emphatically here that there exists a deeper truth beyond logic. Today's video will explore five key ideas that point to a truth beyond rationality. If you enjoy this video, please like, comment, and subscribe. Vienna, 1931. Kurt Gödel publishes a scientific paper that lays out two transformative ideas. First, in any mathematical system, there are true statements that cannot be proven within the system itself. Imagine you are trying to build a perfect logical structure for math. No matter how hard you try, there will always be some truths that lie beyond reach. Things you can see as true, but can't prove using the rules of the system. Second, this goes further and says that such a system cannot prove its own consistency. In other words, you can't prove that your logical system won't lead to contradictions using the tools of the system itself. These are known as the incompleteness theorems. Gödel's work was groundbreaking because it turned logic back on itself, using logical methods to reveal the limits of logic. The narrator and Chris rest in a small, relaxed town. As they resume travel through the desert, the narrator continues, explaining that truth traps often arise from yes-no logic's inability to handle certain input data from reality. This dualism prevents us from seeing that for some scenarios, the proper answer is neither yes nor no, but the Japanese term mu, which means no thing. In the book, mu challenges the approach to problem solving which seeks only direct answers and clear-cut solutions. Instead, it invites readers to embrace a more nuanced understanding that goes beyond traditional categories and dichotomies. Psychologist Dr. Jonathan Young described the term edenic longing as an elusive yearning for something just beyond our reach, always to be yearned for, but never quite arrived at. What drives our wandering and mythologizes our life? This indistinguishable nostalgia for something may be of an origin we may not be able to trace or understand, but may be sometimes imagined as a far-off country, not exactly an earthly landscape we may find, but somehow feels like home. Merkea Iliad called this longing for home the nostalgia for paradise when he wrote, By this we mean the desire to find oneself always and without effort in the center of the world, at the heart of reality, and by a shortcut and in a natural manner to transcend the human condition and to recover the divine condition, as a Christian would say, the condition before the fall. Sigmund Freud described the oceanic feeling as a sense of boundlessness, a feeling of being one with the universe that defies logical boundaries, but mystics and spiritual seekers have often seen it as a glimpse of the ultimate truth. Freud called the oceanic feeling a regression to infantile consciousness, but those who experience it often describe it as a moment of ultimate truth, a merging of self and the universe. This sense of boundlessness, much like the Buddhist concept of no-self, challenges the very idea of logical separations between I and other. It is in these moments that we move beyond logic, into a space of direct experience that feels more real than the structures logic tries to impose. There exists odd paradoxes and self-referential structures in math, what we often consider the deepest form of understanding. Spiraling up this tower of complexity into the world that we live in, I feel that, as a boat moves slightly off course, over time the difference is even greater. One idea that I've never really heard expressed was the Edenic longing that I spoke about earlier, and only now am I realizing that that's a reference to the Garden of Eden. This longing for something that I can't quite describe, yet feel deeply, is an odd sensation that occurs to me periodically. The Rick and Morty episode where Morty lives an entire lifetime as Roy is somewhat similar to this feeling. In this analogy, it would be as if Morty, as Roy in the game, had memories of his old life as Morty. This feeling of remembrance for something that never happened or doesn't fit in the kind of logical story uh, of what happened. When I discussed this video idea with my friend Akira, he asked, what can exist? As well as, because we can imagine something, does that mean it has to be able to exist? Down, down, down we go. These questions call everything into question. The ultimate, deepest, and greatest questions. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, subscribe, and hopefully I'll see you next time.